Baghdad getting whomped? Actually, Baghdad fired missiles at Tel Aviv just now. Bill and uh, Sandra and uh, Bill, really? Well, what happened? asked Bill. Nothing at all yet, says Ted. Oh, I see, says Bill. Uh, come on in and get comfortable. Hey, everyone, this is uh, Bill Brown and Sandra, Sandra Dixon. Sandra Dixon, are you an actress? Sandra Dixon says, isn't everyone in L.A.? Yes, I guess you're right. Well, anyway, uh, prepare to get raptured. Everyone smiles. Sandra, with big, astonished eyes. Man, uh, do you really think we're going to uh, all disappear? If the rapture takes place tonight, and we all have the blood of the lamb over our hearts, we will. Sandra, why should having lamb's blood across my heart make me disappear? Bill to Sandra, it's an idea that evolved from the Jewish Passover. Huh, that's interesting. Then Bill says, he, uh, Ted believes that if you accept Christ as your savior, uh, you will have Jesus' blood across your heart and escape the angel death that will that was unleashed on Egypt during the first Passover. Only this time he feels that the angel of death will be in the form of nuclear missiles, which he feels will take place around the time of the rapture. Sandra, ooh, sounds fun. Robert asks, angel of death, huh? Bill, yeah. Ted's embarrassed. I, I realize it sounds stupid to the children of this world, Teresa then says, and, and primitive. Don't forget primitive. That, too. But I feel, Robert to Ted, will this nuclear will this nuclear angel of death pass over Israel and put spare the Jews that are there now? Ted then says, according to Paul, all are now accountable before God. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, Gentile that is, then Robert asks, so you feel that even Israel is going to get nuked? The whole land will be burned up. Robert then says, Don't you think it's anti-Semitic to believe that God would allow some creep in Baghdad to kill his chosen? Then Ted says, The whole entire region that is known as the, whole, the, the, the land, or God's holy land, is going to be swept clean by the bism, bism of destruction. Bism? That's Hebrew for broom. All those who aren't raptured and all those who aren't a part of the 144,000 Jews, I mean uh, 12 tribes of Israel, will run the risk of being burned up in the coming nuclear war. Sandra says, uh, asks, 144,000? According to Revelation, what makes up the 144,000 are 12 tribes, are, are, are 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, and only those people who God has secretly selected, unbeknownst to that person, will actually be reserved to the bringing back of Israel into existence. This being the case, anyone who is now living over in that region is on shaky ground because they may not be a part of the 144,000, and that goes for everyone else in this world. Roger. And you think you're a part of that special group, right? No. Save Christians won't be a part of this select group because they are going to be raptured before the tribulation. But, well, who knows? Maybe one of you could be one of that chosen group. Teresa, what? Robert, a and how would we know if we were? If an H-bomb blew up over your head, destroying everything, and you were standing there totally untouched by the intense radiation like Shadrach, M M Meshach, and the, and the Bendigo were untouched by the fiery furnace, and if it were to happen, then you would know. Then Teresa says, No, actually, I think I was a ghost. Everyone is smiling. Ted, sounds pretty crazy, huh? But Isaiah says that these people will be able to walk through the rivers and not get wet. Will be able to walk through the fire and not be burned. The weakest of them will be as David, and the strongest will be as God. Roger, smiling. Yeah, the rapture silly is going to take place tonight. <clears throat> and Teresa says, So, you went from believing in Christians becoming walk-ins to Jews becoming supermen now. Only 12,000 Jews will become a part of these supernatural beings because Jews make up only one of the tribes of Israel. But look, this is unimportant. 
What is important is that you accept Christ as suddenly the image of uh, Michelle Takashi comes on all the TV sets in the theater. She has a nervous look in her eyes. Oh, just a minute here. Everyone on the set freezes to see what she says. A smiling picture of the reporter calling her is seen Im imposed with Michelle's image. Michelle says, This is Michelle Takashi, a reporting from this GNN new control room in Tokyo. We are now receiving some disturbing news from Terry Jenkins, our reporter stationed in Riyadh. We will now switch to, Ri to Riyadh and hear what he has to say. Voice of Terry. Sounds of air raid sirens are heard in the background. This is Terry Jenkins reporting from the city of Riyadh. Saudi defense ministers have just informed me that seven Scud missiles are now headed down to Riyadh from Iraq. Ted becomes nervous. Michelle, do you know when they, when they were launched? No, but the sirens have been sounding for about ten minutes. Will they, will they tell you uh, when they will fire their defense missiles? I'm sorry, I was, I, was, I was only notified about the incoming missiles. However, I will tell you what I see from my vantage point. When will they launch them? Probably when they get in range. But I have no idea when that will be. Ted starts pacing back and forth. Roger to Ted. How much do you want to bet that nothing will happen? How much do you want to bet that nothing will happen? Ted, you'd better pray that nothing happens if you aren't saved. Voice of Terry with excitement. P Patriot missiles are lifting off into the, the to the morning sky. I see one, two, three, four, five, s seven columns of smoke trailing up into the sky, into the into the early morning sky. Wait, I hear more Patriots being fired. Yes, seven more Patriot missiles are being fired. Keep your fingers crossed, Michelle. Do you see any signs of the incoming scuds? No, I don't. Wait, yes, I do. Uh, aha, uh -huh. exhaust trails. I see exhaust rails coming from the north, headed straight this way. Oh, Terry, Terry, pray that the Patriots do their work. There they go. There goes one. Wait. Oh, there's another. Damn it. Oh, crap. Damn it. The Patriots seem to be overshooting their mark. And, and, Terry, what? Shouts to Michelle. Sounds of exploding Patriots are now being picked up on the TV sets. Voice of Terry. Oh, uh, I hope the last seven Patriots do a hell of a lot better than... Oh, a Patriot got one. Oh, a Patriot got another. Screams are heard in the background. Terry screams also. Ah, the last totally, the last five totally missed. Michelle. Terry, no. Yes, and here come the scuds. Five loud explosions are heard over the air. Each explosion causes the line to go dead briefly. Michelle panic. Terry, Terry, are you there? Ted, he's... I am here. Yes, Michelle. I'm okay. But that was close. I actually felt the shockwaves of some of some of the exploding scuds. I lost you briefly. Did you lose me? In brief bursts, yes, says Michelle. Voice of Terry. Sounds of the sirens no longer fluctuate. Terry sounds relieved. They are giving the all clear sign. It, it, it appears to be over, and hopefully for good. <laughs> uh, man, I wish I had instant video for you. Uh, words cannot describe the terror of seeing those things coming down at us over oh, uh, coming down us here in Riyadh that was that was Michelle can you describe the mood over in Riyadh everyone is definitely shaken their attention as well as mine are, is now focused on the mushroom clouds that were produced by the scuds Ted mushroom clouds apparently they were carrying very high explosives Ted well then Roger says, well, where's heaven? Are we in heaven now? Teresa sighed. If we were in heaven, we wouldn't be smelling that incense. Ted to Roger. Seems as a, se seems as a go... Ted says to Roger. Seems as though God's hand was stronger that time. Michelle. Suddenly looks at as though someone is signaling to her. She then uh, says to the reporter on the phone, Terry, we have to leave you now. We are getting a call from Tel Aviv. Terry's smiling picture leaves the screen. Michelle turns about in her seat. Her image becomes superimposed with Dave Matsuda's, who is seen standing in the newsroom at Tel Aviv. What do you have to report to us, Dave? Dave says, Michelle, we are now receiving puzzling information from Israeli security on the Scud missile that landed near the aer aero batteries, and you aren't going to believe what the missiles were carrying. A nuclear warhead? 
No, instead of a warhead of any type, it was just carrying a chunk of cement. Did you say, chunk of cement? That's what they are claiming. Are you sure that the cement was from the... Are you sure that... Are you sure that the cement came from the missile? That's what they are reporting. Why would Mahdi shoot duds at Israel but send live ones at Riyadh? Who can guess the actions of the criminally insane? I just hope that just that what just took place in Riyadh was the last of it. Don't we all? Maybe it's a sign that Ali Mahdi is bluffing? Whatever, then Michelle says, well, whatever the case, this is the voice of Michelle, whatever the case, we will get back to you later, Dave. But first, we want to learn about the damage that was done in Riyadh. Yes, do. Dave's image disappears and is replaced by Michelle's. Michelle turns to the cameras and says, that was Dave Matsuda reporting live from G the GNN station in Tel Aviv. And we'll be back after this station break. The TVs in the auditorium go dark again. Ted then says, he's toying with them. Robert, Dr. Weingreen, Sandra, and Bill ask, what? Ali Mahdi is toying with those who he, who, who uh, uh, toy, toying with those he considers his enemies. He has this thing all planned. Roger then says, and where does it say that in the Bible? Didn't you hear? The scuds, the scud that landed in Israel was just carrying cement. How much do you want to bet that all the scuds Mahdi fired at Israel were carrying cement? And Teresa, well, what would he, why would he do that? Hey, after what he did to the Kurds last month shows me, shows me that he is nothing but pure evil. I just bet that he is playing with his enemies, playing with them the way a cat plays with a mouse. Notice how he's, how he's launching the missiles in groups of seven? The fact that the first group of scuds were carrying cement instead of uh, explosives proves to me that Mahdi is playing. Seems to me he's trying to build terror in the country he hates most, which is Israel. He is trying to build terror before launching the worst of what he has at Israel. In other words, he is saving his best fireworks for last. Roger. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Teresa, same here. Same here. Doesn't anyone see what's happening here? Sandra, why should you be so happy that the Middle East could nuke itself? Ted nearly shouting, I'm not happy about it. Bill, you won't kill yourself if nothing happens, will you? You really don't think, even a little, that these missiles and the threat of H-bombs in the Middle East are signs of prophecy unfolding, do you? Weingreen uh, says, Ted, I'd like to tell you a true story that happened a long time ago in my family. I don't want to brag, but my grandparents were a highly intelligent couple and a couple who really loved each other. I mean, they worshipped each other. Then, not too long after my dad was born, my grandfather was killed by a young punk gang member as he waited for a cab. It was a very senseless killing, uh, the result of uh, grandfather being low on cash. Suddenly, Michelle Takashi comes on the all TV screens in the theater. She has a worried look in her eyes. Her lips are moving, but no one is able to hear what she says. The thing is, Although my grandparents were brilliant, Ted suddenly sees Michelle's image. Oh, oh, keep the thought. He points to the TV screen. Now Michelle can be heard. Michelle, we are now switching to Dave Matsuda in Tel Aviv. Into, 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 switching to Dave Matsuda in our Tel Aviv uh, sister station to find out about the second attack on Israel. A second attack, says Ted. Dave standing in the window at the GNN control room in Tel Aviv looking relieved, even though air raid sirens sound. Am I on? You are on, Dave. Can you give us the latest on the approaching missiles? Ted, oh man. Dave, well, Michelle, something strange happened 12 minutes ago. It really looked like seven more missiles were being launched, and this time from the Baghdad area, area 14 minutes ago. But two minutes after the missiles were launched, all seven missiles began to drop off Israeli defense radar. We heard, Michelle says, we heard a few minutes ago that another Scud was found with a cement block. Ted, another? Michelle, is Ali Mahdi playing some kind of bully game with Israel? You mean, like, quickly throwing up one's hand in a threatening manner, causing the victim to flinch, but combing his hair instead? Michelle, well, 
I guess that's a good description. It seems to be the case. Why, uh, why Mahdi is sending duds and missiles uh, with low fuel at Israel is anyone's guess. Maybe all the missiles Mahdi sent at Israel were deadly, but some higher power transformed them into something harmless? Michelle, sounds as though you've been in the Holy Land too long, Dave. I might have. Suddenly, there's a flash of light and a loud explosion that causes the TV screens in the theater to flash out and become snowy. Cut to Michelle, jumping up from her seat and screaming, Dave! All react, all react to this, on this, all rea on the set react with stunned shock and fear. Ted leaping into, the, leaping into the open. Wow! Oh man! Oh man! Starts pacing back wildly about as the others stand with shock. Ted looks up. God looks at his friends. This is the control room where Dave Matsuda was standing and returns. The picture is no longer clear, but somewhat distorted. All theater TV sets show people running in the control room. Screams and cries are heard. There is smoke in the air. Two people are seen helping Dave up, who is slightly torn and bleeding from flying glass. Michelle, Dave, Dave, are you all right? Screaming, what happened? Dave, Michelle, Michelle, I... Sounds of explosions are heard in the distance, following by more screams. I can't believe what ha just happened. What was that? Was that a runaway mis arrow missile or what? Michelle, why would they? Why would they have fired it? It doesn't make sense, says Dave. It actually seemed as though it was meant for us. But why? Scrambles to pick up microphone. Your, Michelle, your image isn't very clear. The explosions must have damaged your transmitter. Dave, I, I've got to find out what the hell that was. Voice in the background shouting, Look, it's burning! Michelle, Dave, there seems to be something. Something causing a star. Dave, that that couldn't have been from Iraq. Dave listens to the headphone, looks at camera. I'll get back to you as soon as possible when I find out what it was. Michelle says, Dave, we heard other explosions in the back." In, we heard other explosions in the background. Could you go to the window and tell us what all the commotion is? Great idea, Michelle. He puts down headphone, jumps over to the window. A look of stunned amazement comes on his face. Oh, no, it can't be, it can't be. Michelle, what is it? What do you see, Dave? The Schlong Tower Hotel. It's burning. There are two big burning holes in its side. All TVs are showing a huge 50-story high-rise building burning in the middle of a city. Oh, this is unreal! This is impossible! Suddenly, four cruise missiles begin striking. Striking at the foot of the hotel, shaking the tower violently from their explosions. Ah! Missiles just came out of nowhere! They hit the Shalom Tower! I repeat, they hit the Shalom Tower Hotel at its base! Screams are heard as the ho as the hotel begins tilting to the side on the TV screens. Oh, now the magnificent tower is falling. It's falling. Oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. Oh, the humanity, it's cracking. I, I, I can't go on. Michelle screaming, Dave! TV screens show a collapsed, collapsed, burning building. Dave crying. The entire building fell over, fell over. It, they're right down on the people. Oh, the humanity. The TV screens fade to black. Ted with wild eyes. Cruise missiles. Those are cruise missiles. Iraq fired cr miss cruise missiles. What else don't we know about his is about its weaponry, huh? Teresa. Cad, I can't believe what I just saw. Roger then says, Monty could have just gotten awfully lucky. It, it doesn't mean that those were crews. Bill, well, wh what wh what made them disappear off the radar? Okay, they might have been, but look, this is the Middle East. Crazy things like this happen once every decade there. Ted, not like this. We were all led to believe Iraq no longer uh, had long-range missiles. What happens? It fires long-range missiles. It was believed that Iraq never w would never have cruise missiles. Well, what kind of missiles were those? And who gave Iraq the technology to steer those missiles? If it were able to hide cruise missiles from the world, well, could it be that it's actually hiding H-bombs as well? 
Roger H. Bombs. Right. I tell you, folks, this is it. Jeremiah chapter 49 is about to unfold along with Habakkuk chapter 3. And if you don't, and if you aren't saved, you will regret it. Because what happens in Jeremiah 49 is only the beginning. It's only the beginning. Begins to go to the kitchen. And I'm going to make some more popcorn to go along with it. Fade to black. Curtain. Act two. Scene one. It's now six hours later. It's dark outside. And Roger and Teresa are dancing to some music along with Bill and Sandra. Robert and Dr. Weingreen are looking at Mr. Jameson's books. Ted is sitting on the couch watching TV and looking really depressed with his hands over his face. Then, when the music stops, Sandra says, That was fun to Ted. You want to dance with me? Ted says, Ah... Uh, I'm sorry, Sandra. You really, you're really a lovely looking girl. But now, well, I just feel really, really tired. Then Teresa says, Ah, poor Teddy. To the others, just like last time, no one got nuked. I sure wish you would keep, sh uh, Ted says, I sure wish, I sure wish you would shut up about that. I didn't want to see anyone get killed. Can't you get it through your head? I I just wanted out of here. Teresa, Chris and Sheer are death freaks. Of course, if you aren't getting any, then I can certainly see why. We aren't death freaks. Well, it sure seems like you want to die. Per personally, I can't see much difference between the desire of being raptured and the desire of committing suicide. They both get you out of life. The only difference with suicide is that it takes your body longer to disappear unless you are cremated. You... You can go home if you want. I really doubt that anything is going to happen. I mean, why should, why should God break tradition of not showing up? I... I can't believe that it happened again. If anything were going to happen, it, it should have happened half an hour ago. Dr. Wangreen this. Why do you say that? There's a scripture that says the sun shall be darkened at noonday. It's supposed to take place at Ashdod, which is where present-day Jordan is located. Of course, all this means nothing, being that Mahdi has been killed. Roger smiling. <laughs> Boy, was he. The Kurds really kicked ass. They tore that evil son of shit from limb to limb. Robert... And the Kurds are now the heroes of the Middle East. Most of all, Iraq will now be known as Kurdistan, and after what Iraq was doing today, well, I think everyone will finally welcome this fact. Roger. It was only because America armed them and gave them the air cover to finish the job that wimpy George Bush failed to do centuries ago. And guess what, Ted? Baghdad is taken. Hey, you know, uh, the earth was moved when Babylon was taken. Moved with applause, that is. Ted, you really can go home now. You don't have to stay. Teresa, what about our thousand dollars? Roger. Tree, quit kicking the man while he's down. Besides, I had a great time. We got to see some exciting TV history in the making, and we had a bizarre interpretation go along with it. Plus, I got to dance with Sandra. Sandra flirts with Roger a little. I tell you, Ted, this was the best rapture party.